All right, so today I'm here with uh, my technicians, Nava and Melissa, and we have a GE dishwasher. And so what we're gonna do is really deep dive and go through all the function of the GE dishwasher. We're gonna talk a lot about the why it works a certain way, because when you understand the why, then the how part of it becomes fairly simple, right? So understanding theory is very important. And I think once you understand that, it's all gonna start clicking together. So let's go ahead and kind of dig into this. So the first thing I want to talk about is the reason that a dishwasher is made the way it is. Okay. So the logic you'd like to use on this is that form fits function, right? So when they woke up and said, hey, let's make a dishwasher, that's not, you know, mom or dad in the sink with the Dawn dish detergent on their hand, you know, cleaning dishes. Okay, what were they thinking? Well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to emulate what you do in the sink with a dishwasher, right? So let's walk through it. So we start from the common point of you have a sink full of dirty water that now you have these dishes that you need to clean. That's how a dishwasher works. That's why the first function of a dishwasher is drain, okay? Always, dishwasher is gonna drain out the old water to make sure that dirty water is not in here. Okay, once it finishes draining, all right, what do we think it does next? Um, it fills up and goes to wash. It fills up with water, right? So it's gonna pump water through the water inlet valve, fill it up, get it to a certain level, and then at that point, it's gonna start washing it. So the wash pump's gonna kick in, start throwing the water around, okay? And as it's going through, it's gonna drain periodically, because it's gonna say, okay, well this water is now dirty water. Let's put some clean water in here. Let's put it around some more, right? So it's gonna keep doing this over and over again until it gets to, I'm sorry, and it's gonna heat it up. The heating elements are gonna heat up the water as it goes through. Because the heating function is what sanitizes the wash cycle, okay? So bam, heats it up, does all that good stuff, finally says, all right, this is a clean, we're good. So then it's gonna turn on the drain pump and pump this water out of here. Gotcha. Done, end the cycle, okay? Yeah. Let me back up. It's gonna pump the water out of here, then it's gonna turn the heating element back on because it has to dry the dishes. <laughs> then we're done, end the cycle, okay? So then, bam. So you're done. So, okay, I'll tell you the next load. All right, so now we wanna kinda of talk through the power and things like that, All right? Any questions about the overall kinda of high level function of why a dishwasher does what it, what it does? Nope. Okay, so now we're gonna dig down into individual components. First component we wanna talk through is the water inlet valve. All right? So when the water comes in, the water inlet valve is pumping water inside the tub. Now, Here's something that people don't know about. On a GE dishwasher, once it pumps water in the tub, this pressure sensor right here reads how much pressure is into the tub and it sends a signal, hertz, so it sends a signal to the control board. Okay. And then the control board says, all right, cool, we got enough water, we can start the next cycle. Or we don't have any water or it's overfilling or whatever, okay? So now, so let's stop right here because this is a common issue with these. These get clogged up. So I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you take that off. And you're just gonna pop that up and turn it. Let's go the opposite way. You're, gonna, you're just gonna turn it. Let's go here, go ahead, turn it. Will it come up? Bam, all right. I yeah. Okay, Let's go back just a little bit. All right, so this is our piece right here. So this is your bottom of your tub. This is where water comes in. And as water comes in, it pressurizes right here. There's a little board inside the top of here. Okay. okay? So now, if you pop this open, and like I said, this is, this is the common repair. Go ahead and pull that up. Right? And it's a common repair because 
food and gunk gets in here, right? And this is where the pressure comes in at. So it clogs it up. So then a customer will call and say, hey, my dishwasher won't fill with water or I get an H2O air. That's the air that's gonna pop up on your GE tool, on your screen if they have one. And that H2O air says, hey, there's a water issue. And so we always wanna check this, okay. right? Now, I used to clean these, I don't anymore. I replace them. They're a cheap enough part because what happens is if you kind of just clean the top of it and there's gunk inside there that you don't see, it's gonna be a recall. Like somebody's gonna call you back and say, hey, I have an H2O error again. So just know that's a, that's a very common issue, okay? And so the sign of this going out is water won't pump in? So, right, it'll stop all the cycles. Okay. It'll give you an H2O error, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. And right, they just can't, they, they can't run any cycles and water won't come in. Okay. So, you know, so it's, it gives you a, um, like a false feeling that, it gives you a false feeling that the water valve is off or, you know, something's wrong with the control board or something like that. And it's something so simple. Yep, something so simple. Gotcha. Thank you. So this is like the duck lips. So do you replace those if they get dirty or you just clean them? Well, yeah, you just clean this. Okay. Yeah, this is just a gasket. Gotcha. So, but when you get a new one, it comes with a brand new gasket on it. Oh. So if you replace that piece, it comes with the... Yeah, well, when you replace it, you get this one piece. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, gotcha. I just popped this off, like I said, I was cleaning it out. You know, you can blow air inside of it too, but it, it's not even worth it, you know, like I said, because you just don't know what type of damage you have. All right. So when you put a new one back in or put that on, just make it flush and just turn it. Okay. Let it look flush. Because you, you don't want it leaking. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to move from here over to the drain pump. So drain pump simply removes water out of the bottom of the tub and sends it out through the hose, many times through the air gap. If there's no air gap, it's gonna go you know, straight to the sink or straight to the garbage disposal. Yeah. All right, so now let's go ahead and take that drain pump off, please. All right, so you look at this drain pump, right? You got simple voltage coming through here. So, you know, we already had the diagram where you can, you can test voltage right here, um, but usually it's just a little blade. And it, it's the same for a dishwasher, washing machine. Usually there's a little pump there and this thing just, you know, it dies over time or um, you may have like glass that gets broken and gets stuck in there. And, you know, it burns the pump up. Just a small motor there. This is actually a DC pump. And so fairly common on the GE dishwasher as well. And then when you want to put it back on, just remember where your clip is. So your clip's right, okay, there you go. So go past it. You want to put that part right there. There you go. Try to get it flush. Bam. All right, so drain pump's back on. Okay, so let's move across. So now this piece right here, you might want to attempt to get that piece out. It just turns. It just turns and pulls out. Oh. Now this is an interesting little piece. Any guesses as to what this does? I'll tell you what the name of it is. It's called a turbidity sensor. Nava, you want to guess what it does? I have no idea. Uh, I think it's I think it sends something to the uh, panel, like as far as the motor goes, because it's connected to it, so it's maybe when it runs, when it stops. Okay, like close, very close. All right, so it's kind of cool. I think this is cool, all right? <laughs> so this turbidity sensor emits light, okay? So as your dishes are washing, there's a light signal that goes across the water. And we report back to the control board how clear the water is. Wow. So if the water's dirty, it runs more cycles until it's clear. Hmm. So 
And so once the water is clear enough, it knows your dishes are clean. So that's the purpose of this. So if this thing fails, somebody might be like, look, you know, my dishes, they, you know, if it's a cycle and they're not clean or, you know, man, it's running for three hours, you know? So, so I've never had to replace one, but that's what it's designed for. Okay. And that's why it's right here where it's coming to the pump. All right, so let's talk about the pump. So this is the workhorse. A lot of times the pump is fine, but it's this rubber piece right here that connects the pump to the housing, right? Yeah. It develops a leak, like it will just break somewhere under here. So the customer's like, man, water's leaking every time I wash. I don't see where it's coming from. And then I just know automatically to look here, right? Yeah. So here's the problem from the customer standpoint. They don't just make this hose. You gotta buy this whole thing with the hose on it in order to fix the hose issue, right? So then the question becomes, hey, can we just go buy a hose from, you know, Ace Hardware? No, you can't. No, you can't. You, you know, it's designed for a certain reason, pressures, temperature, and stuff like that. So you want to make sure you maintain the integrity of the system. Right. So that's something that um, potentially you're going to run into. All right. Any questions about the, the pump piece? And you can see where the voltage is coming in at. And you can measure voltage here. But like I said, you can still measure voltage from the control board as well. Yeah. You know, is power going out? So let's say this wasn't running. You know, you want to ver verify if power comes from the board. Then you can come here and verify power here as well. Okay. All right. Any questions on that? Nope. So next we have the heating element. All right, so let's check the heating element for continuity. All right, so take the connectors off. Because what you don't want to do is get a false reading, right? You may be checking continuity going back the opposite way to the board. Oh yeah, you can pull it hard. Sure. Mm -hmm. Look, this part's already broke. You ain't gonna break nothing else. All right. So when we understand continuity, just means electricity can flow from one side to the other. Right. So yes. Now we want to check the paperwork to see what should we be getting. Um, fourteen. Okay. Is there a plus or minus on that? Point okay. Now it just says fourteen. Okay. All right. Okay, all right, so go ahead. And so we have, what do we have? 13. Re look, right there? Oh, 14. Yep. 13, yeah. Yep, so 13, 14, you're good. It's good, yeah. Yep, so we know, so we know the heating element is good. That's perfect. Okay. I know it was close to that. All right, so then let's talk about voltage, right? So we have, now we have incoming power to the control board, okay. which is here. Yes. Okay. And so it's here because we hooked the cord up to it. Otherwise, it would come from a customer's home and it comes to the same spot, right? This is where power comes in at. So a lot of times, as you dealt with yesterday, mm -hmm. you get somebody saying, hey, my dishwasher's not starting up. I think I have power. I don't know if I have power. It tripped the breaker, right? <clears throat> so a good starting point, obviously, is these wires. So remember what the black wire is? So black wire is going to be your line in. Oh, line in, line right? in. Right? Yes. This is going to be your neutral wire. Neutral. And that's going to be your ground. Okay? So you check voltage from your line in and your neutral. Correct? Yes. All right. So let's make sure it's on. And it is. And go ahead and just put our probes in there. Don't touch it with your hand if you can avoid it. <laughs> Just put your probe down in there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> okay. That's okay. So that's DC voltage. We want AC voltage. Remember, DC is your straight line. AC is going to be there. You go. Yep. All right. What do we have? One twenty-three point seven. That's what we want. Right, so we got proper voltage coming to the machine. So with proper voltage coming to the machine, that means what? We got power. We got power. 
And in theory, the control panel should light up. Everything should work as designed, right? Yes. Okay, all right, so I'm good with that. Okay. All right, so we got power. Got your connectors on there. You got a good security on here. So we know the control board has power. Power comes out of the control board, right? Goes to the wiring harness, mm -hmm. goes up to the front panel. All right, any questions on that? I'm no, sure. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably a little simpler now that you kind of understand the theory behind it. Yeah. Okay, so now let's test this thing. So you're gonna help me on that side. All we're gonna do is stand it up. When I say stand it up, yeah, there you go. Bam, right? So you're at the customer's house, right, Melissa? Y'all know how you roll? Yeah. You be like this, yes. right? Looking around with a phone in your hand. Hey, sir, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the dishwasher. <laughs> All right, and, and, and to your point, I'm like, this is how much space we actually have under here, okay? Literally. Yep, literally. So now you've verified all that. So at a minimum, right, this thing should pop on, correct? Correct. All right, so let's see. Bam, dishwasher works, okay? So we know we're doing what we're supposed to do. All right, so from where we're at right here, and I'll hold this here because this thing will kind of flop over. So where we're at right here, now we want to go on the inside, okay? So you have our trays. Let's go ahead and pull our trays out. All right. Yep. Okay, so now we're getting the inside. Couple things. Number one is we have common complaints about, you know, dishes not getting clean. So one thing we always want to check, and you can just turn this and take it off. You want to check to make sure that the spray arms aren't clogged, right? Because the clogged water can't come out. Right. But it happens a lot. So one thing you want to do, like you know, you put a toothpick in here and pick stuff out if you have it. But if there's crap all in there, then sometimes it's just simpler and easier and cheaper just to replace this to know you got a good, you got a good spray on, mm -hmm. all right? Next, you're gonna have your heating element. That's right here, okay? And so that's what we check for continuity on the back. You wanna visually inspect this because if the heating element isn't working, like sometimes you'll see a break in here, you know, which of course there's no continuity if you got a break in the heating element or you'll see a bubble or something. It needs to be correct. Yeah, yep, absolutely, yes. I yeah, mean, it's easy to see, but of course, if it's cracked, you wouldn't have any continuity on the back end, you know, but you can visually kind of see why I don't have continuity. Another thing is the filter, right? So this is something that you want people to clean out periodically because of course, if it can't, water can't flow through, it can't breathe, can't catch stuff, it's just all gunked up, then it's not going to operate efficiently. All right, any questions about the inside? I get my filter back in, okay. And then when water comes in, this is the whole water comes into the, so the water inlet valve is there. Is that where the water shoots it across? There's a black hole on the side. This is where water comes in when it's filling. Gotcha. It just comes in and fills the bottom of the tub. Then that pressure sensor determines when the pressure gets a certain point, then it turns the water off. Gotcha. Okay. Another thing is um, you may get a complaint about leaks. Mm -hmm. So this gasket is something that you want to be sensitive to to the point where if there's any gases in it, water will travel through the gas and come down the back and come down through the door frame and down on the floor. What about the outside seal? All right. Yeah, so now this is this is for this is between dishwasher and the cabinet. It doesn't affect leaks. Gotcha. This is just so you don't see through the cabinet gotcha. what's back there. <laughs> um, another thing I will add and we'll see after we pull the door off is even though there's a seal here, this seal doesn't seal the door to the to the uh, to the shell. This seal just stops it like right inside here. Like like there's a U. Like you can put your you can do it. Put your hand under here, and you, you can feel you can feel where that lip is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if like the inlet valve was defective, I don't know, it kept throwing water, it would just come over that lip onto the floor. So it's not like it's it's a seal tight. Yeah. At the bottom. Okay. It's just that water should not come above a certain level throughout the process. All right. So I love talking. I love doing all the work. But um, I'm going to let y'all figure out as a team how to take this door off. The whole door? Mm -hmm. I'll, right. I'll hold the frame. 
So you got working together and communicating. I love the teamwork. Bam. Okay, hold it right there. Mm -hmm. Make sure I pull this off. Okay. All right. All right. Don't care where you put it. Good job. Good job, right? But it's nice to understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's nice to understand that it sits right here in these teeth. And um, okay. you have your you have your piece here. Right, this is now this is important. Let's 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 talk through this. So this is your spring, right? That goes to the case. And then this connects to your spring, it goes around. Right to hold the door in place. Right. Okay. Pulls it out when it's open. Right, and this provides the tension. So right. if anybody ever says, "Oh, open the dishwasher and the door just fell down," one of these is probably broken or just came off or whatever. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And because this string will break. All right. So then you just go buy a new one, obviously, and put it back. Now, here's another thing. I, I, I tell you this because it saved me a lot of time. So. When you are doing a repair, so there's a repair where you gotta take that door off and you have to um, change the user interface board out at the top, okay? Mm -hmm. So when that happens, you can either do one of two things. You can pull the dishwasher all the way out, right? So unhook plumbing, uh, I'm sorry, unhook the uh, line coming in, hook power, do all that. Or you can say, hey, I'm just gonna take the, like you just did, I'm gonna take the door up from where it's at. Right, but the problem is when it's in the cabinet, it's it's hard to do what you guys just did. Yeah. Okay, because you got all this tension on here, and it's just, you can't angle up. So what I have found out over time is you got a small space there, but it's okay. So what you do is, if you don't mind, hold this. Since we have no door, can you just hold this right there? So I say hold it under, hold it under the wheel right there. Okay. So what you do is you come underneath the with it, you know, with it sitting right there. Mm -hmm. You come underneath the dishwasher <laughs> like this. Yeah. I kid you not. No, seriously. Right? You grab you grab the spring yeah. and you release the tension okay. right here where knob is. Yeah. And then you pull it off of the door. Oh. Right? Let me move your hand. And you lay it like right there. Okay. Because what you don't want to happen while you're on the dishwasher is that this piece comes flying off. <laughs> you know, then you're sitting here like this, yeah. you know, so you lay it down real easy. So it's still together and it's still on the door or still on the frame, I'm sorry. All right, no, I want, I want the smaller hole. Yeah, okay, so yeah, you put it where it's still on the frame. And then that way, when you're working on the door and you get done, mm -hmm. you can easily Put it back and then just pull this back onto the door frame. Okay. Like that, and I'm telling you, that's such a time saver. Because when it comes to a dishwasher, you want to uninstall a dishwasher the least amount of times possible. You do not want to get in the business of uninstalling and reinstalling dishwasher. That helps nobody, right? Because number one, if you have a copper water line that's hooked to your water valve, right? If you got a copper water line right here. Those things are prone to leak when they're disturbed, okay? Then <clears throat> if you have any power, you know, power line issues over here or you can get this thing to start leaking because you rub it up against something when you're pulling it out, it's just not worth it. You know, then you got to unhook electrical. It, it's just not worth doing all that, in, in my professional opinion, okay? All right. Any questions about that part? No, sir. Okay. Anybody need a break? You need some water or anything? I'll, hey, I'll go all day long on this. All right, you good? Yeah. Let's grab that door. Okay. So this is our beautiful GE door. 
And so this door, like I said, is just a control panel. <clears throat> I'm sorry, user interface. That plugs into the control panel, right? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't she lovely? All right. So turn this around. And now you see all the great pieces, right? You got your soap dispenser. You got your vent right there. All right, so we wanna take this door apart because what happens is, like I said, the board inside here fails. Mm -hmm. And so you need to replace that board. Gotcha. But how do we get to the board? We gotta take this door off. So one of the first pieces of taking this door off <clears throat> is you gotta remove that vent. Okay. Any volunteers to remove the vent? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Hey, look, it's great when we have appliances in here because it's just a learning lab. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. I've never done it with my hand. I've always used a needle nose and just I turn it. Dang, you ain't playing. Okay, all right, I see you. <laughs> I see you. Okay, right, so form fits function. So now <clears throat> we want to look at the door and say, all right, how do we think this comes apart? I see some screws. What, what do we think? This door is, this door is like, I ain't messing with y'all today. All right, so what about this step right here? To disassemble the inner door, right? Press and hold on pocket handle while pulling tabs out and up as shown to disengage bottom tabs. See that right there? You got a mm -hmm. tab right there and you got a tab right there. Okay. Tilt panel to remove from door. here right right here yeah well, look, man y'all making profit damn i love it i love it good job y'all <laughs> yes so the best way the best way to separate the so the best way to separate the outer door from the inner door is to remove our screws at the bottom okay so if you look here you have screws at the bottom remove the screws at the bottom and then you want to slot because these are your clips right here yeah right yeah. so you want you want to separate it by sliding this down and basically that up and they just removed from the clips. That's it, because it fits inside here. And I think where we went wrong, right. we were doing it from this side. Right. And not the front side. Absolutely. So I guess it Absolutely. makes a big difference. Right, right, yes. And right, because the, the, the step says slide the outer panel yeah. down. Yeah. We were sliding the inner panel. Yes. That's right. Hey, that's how we learned. Okay. <laughs> now, we got to get this control board out, right? Right. So what's our next steps? To disassemble the inner door components, this is where we're at right here. Okay. So right now we have the user interface panel, and inside the user interface panel is a control uh, is a board. So it's an electronic board, and so basically the outside is the touch panel, right? So start cycle, heat it dry, whatever you want to do. All right, you're pressing it, and there's a small board underneath it, and so they're trying to get the outer shell off. So we can get to the board underneath because that board underneath is something that uh, fails on a regular basis on the GE dishwashers and uh, we want to know how to get to. So there's specific instructions because there's clips and things mounted on there and we need to go ahead and disengage those clips to be able to get access to that board. So that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish now. From right here, Look at, we got, we got a drawing, we got instructions. What clips are we trying to disengage? Do we need more lighting? Can you see them? Oh, you got it. 
Okay, you got it. All right, so let's let. Yeah, let's let's show the board. So so you got it. So this this is the control board right here. Okay, so when you change this board out, obviously you're gonna disconnect power. Take these screws out and put the other board in the way you took this out. So good job getting it off. But you can see those those clips aren't they aren't always easy to disengage. No. Yep. Okay. All right. Put that back on, please. You gotta, yeah, you just gotta make sure the there you go. Keep, keep it flush as you push. There you go. Bam. Okay. All right. There you go. So we'll flip it over and put our screws back in. And you gotta put your brackets back in. Now, just okay. You got a gap right here. So just as a rule of thumb, process-wise. Don't forget, in the real environment, take pictures take each pictures. phase of the thing. Because the worst thing you want to do is get to the end, and you're like, dang, how was this in here? And then you're sitting there trying to figure it out. Okay. All right, so now we're getting the bottom bracket back on. You definitely want to get it back tight, otherwise you got a door wobbling or leaking or. Right. All right, so um, our vent cover, let's go ahead and put, put that back on. Okay, cool. Yep. So make sure you got a good tight seal because you know it's flashing water in here. You're good. Okay, okay we're good. All right. All right. So now we're gonna put the door back on. All right. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull this forward a little bit. My, rec my recommendation to you is I would get the door set first, then worry about putting the um, putting the tension on the door. So once you get it closed, then you can put the tension on it. All right, so what we're doing now is setting the door on a track, on the frame track, so that we can add the, uh, add our tension line to it. Okay, when you set it, kind of lean it back a little bit. Size up. Don't get your hand caught in there. There it is. Bam. Yeah. Bam, does it close? Yeah. All right, door closes. Now, since the door is closed, you can go ahead and add your tension on there. So you got your spring and your and your wire. Go ahead. All right. So, yep. So that, yep. It goes under the wheel. Bam. Bam. Okay. All right, check Nava's, make sure, we're, and Nava check hers. Good. Okay, just open the door up, make sure we got some good tension on there. I like it, I like it. All right, theory of operation of a dishwasher. What does it do? Cleans your dishes. All right, and how does it clean your dishes? Absolutely. Right. All right. So I'm going to explain, I'm going to explain dishwasher theory a whole different way. This is Lamar in the sink. I walk up to the sink. Ugh, that's a bunch of dirty water in here. I pull the plug and I drain it out. Right. That's my drain pump. Okay. It drains out. I put the plug back in and then I turn the faucet on. That's my water inlet valve. Okay. Let the water come up. Now at that point in time, right. You got your detergent. I'm putting Dawn dish detergent in my water, right? That's why we put the pod in here, or you put your granules, doesn't matter, okay? So water fill, oh, let me be very clear. It's hot water, okay? Your dishwasher is only hooked to your hot water line, period. There's no cold water line coming to the dishwasher, okay? 
So that hot water is perfect for sanit sanitizing and cleaning, okay? So bam, I'm putting hot water in there. I got all my suds. That's when the wash pump kicks in, okay? Which are my hands. <laughs> my hands in the towel, right? I'm, I'm cleaning these dishes I'm, and, and I'm pulling them up one by one. And guess what? I'm rinsing them off, right? So, it, you know, it's, it's just over and over again until I get to the last dish, except this is all in one tray, right? Yeah, and then I'm, I'm drying them, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, let's go back, let's go back to the bottom of our dishwasher. What is this beautiful thing with a hose coming out of it? Drain pump. Drain pump, all right. And drain pump does what? Drains the water. Drains the water out, that simple. Okay, what's this right here? Water inlet valve. Water inlet valve, and the water inlet valve does what? And it's hooked to water line. what side of the water line? Hot. Hot water line, correct. Okay. What's this thing, beautiful thing right here with a control board on top? Or a board on top? The sensor? Right. So, and, and uh, yeah, it, that's yeah, it senses water level. Yes. Okay. And that's what, that's how the control board knows how much water is in this dishwasher. So it doesn't overfill. It, it, right. It, right. It does, correct. It doesn't overfill. And when it's not filling, right? And it's gonna it's gonna error out and you gotta figure out why and a lot of times it's because this thing is all messed up. Alright, what's this beautiful piece of machinery right here? Circulation pump. Bam, circulation pump, absolutely. And where do we get, commonly get leaks on the circulation pump? Uh, oh, the at the elbow. The hose. Yep. <laughs> the, the elbow hose right here commonly leaks. Anybody know what this beautiful thing is right here? Turbidity sensor shoots a, shoots shoots across the water. Absolutely. What's this right here? Board. That's our control board. How many volts of power are coming to the control board? 120. 120. Absolutely, all day long. Okay. And so as we know, now we have the smart HQ. So we have the ability to tap into the control board with our smartphone and figure out what's going on with it and run and run cycles. So I had a customer ask me one time, they said, well, is that just like the code reader on the car? I was like, no. I was like, why not? I said, because it runs a machine. Code reader doesn't run a car. Right. So that's the beautiful thing about having this GE tool. I know. <laughs> I gave you another cable. I gave you the beautiful cable. I know. I got the duck. I just wanted to put it on. I got the tape mafia. Okay. All right. So from where we're at right now, we're going to go ahead and run a couple things. And so what we want to do is check for amp draw on everything that we run okay so number one i gotta plug this back in right so just plug it to the control board so we're gonna plug that in right here just so you know this is where this plugs in to the control board bam you heard that beautiful sound yeah. so we're gonna run our ge tool let's go ahead and get the amp we should be able to pull this up on the tv screen let's let's see and then you can see everything running. Let's go ahead and stand the dishwasher up while we're waiting on that. Because you can put it in test mode from, I'll have you put it in test mode from here. Okay. All right, so what we're doing now is we are going to, into the computer, we're doing what we call test mode. So basically it's a sequence we do so that we can run functions independently. So like we can go put power straight to the drain pump, power straight to the wash pump. We can turn the spray arms, all that, just from the front panel. And so why is that important, right? It's important because when you're diagnosing a problem in the customer's home, you, don't, you can't sit there and wait for the whole two and three hour cycle to run in the dishwasher. So you wanna go to test mode and be able to test each individual function to see where it's dying out at. So if a customer tells you, oh, Lamar, it won't heat, Okay, no problem. I can go in test mode and I can just go straight and test the heating element. Can you explain what uh, she's doing right I know she's putting it in test mode, but can you explain the steps that she just took to get it there? Or is it super technical? Nope, water? it's not super technical. She's going to talk us through it. <laughs> so it says, uh, I'll read it like this. So okay. service mode, uh, press and hold the furthest most pad on the left for five seconds. There we go. Yep, so it's giving us an error because we don't have any water line hooked up. So service mode can only be entered doing error mode. Is there an error mode uh, one above that? Press and hold the furthest most pad on left and the start pad simultaneously for five seconds. Okay. So you gotta turn it off first, right? Then it's safe from 
Five seconds. Oh, bro. Hold on, don't break it. Okay, so dishwasher needs to be in standby mode, so you don't need to have any of this on, right? So now we're gonna use a smart HQ. So what is this? This is an application on our phone, iPad, whatever you have it hooked up to, but it allows us to do all the diagnostic, read codes, run programs, everything from here. Um, so the key thing is number one, it gives us all the fault codes, right? So we're at a customer's house and they're like, oh, it's not working right. Well, ma'am, let me Bluetooth connect to the Smart HQ, right? That's it, that's hooked into the control board. And then I'll be able to find out what's going on. Oh, Lamar, well, can you tell me, when was it manufactured? Well, ma'am, it was manufactured in September 20, glad you asked, it was manufactured in September 2020. And oh, by the way, you've been running your dishwasher for one year and 295 days, right? So, and that's important, right? Yeah. Because when we explain to people is, let's say you're a single person, you're running it once every two days versus a family of six, every four hours you're running this thing, yeah. okay? So just because it's been sitting there for three years, it may have four years worth of, five years worth of use on it, okay? So now we got the model number, serial number, bam, we got everything we need. So let's look at the faults. Oh, wow, there was, your, your dishwasher has three faults. You have a no fill failure. Makes sense, right? We don't have any water hooked up. It fell in the drain, okay, which makes sense. There's no water. Well, actually, the customer told us the drain pump was bad when he gave it to us, so I'm okay with that. And we have a CSM trip. So at some point, your control board tripped and had to be reset, okay? Now, as a technician, oh uh, man, I'm curious what that no fill failure all, is all about. Like, what do I need to do? Well, let me click on it. It tells you. It tells you what cycle? Zero days ago, cycle 728. Lamar, you need to check the water valve. See if a water source is hooked up to the dishwasher. Well, we know there's no water source hooked to the dishwasher, right? Check for food deposit buildup in a pressure sensor inlet. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. We know what the pressure sensor inlet is, right? Yeah. Okay, so we know that thing clogs up with food or debris all the time, okay? So at least that kind of zeroes us in. Because if you didn't have this, you kind of end up really guessing and not knowing exactly what's going on. And you may replace the wrong part, not replace the right part, have a recall. So that's stuff you don't want to do. So that, that's the benefit of being able to have this detailed, deep dive diagnostic on what's going on with the machine. All right, so you go through all that, you fix everything, boom, boom, boom. All right, so what we can do, we can clear our codes. And the beauty of clearing the codes is now you run it again and you have it go through and you're not looking at old codes getting confused, right? You'll be able to tell, oh, if it goes through, no codes, I'm good. But one of those codes pop back up, hey, the issue is not resolved. So I need to go back and look at it. All right, so we got it there. And then on the diagnostics, alerts. There's no alerts, right? So what would an alert be? An alert would be something like the manufacturer said, hey, we've got enough complaints about this that we don't let you know if this is a problem and you probably want to address it while you're in here, okay? okay? All right, now firmware update. This is important, okay? Right now, firmware update is not, not required, but many times, so you get the dishwasher in 2020. Technicians out there in 2024, okay? Every time somebody reported something back to GE, just like your phone, just like anything else, they're updating the software, right? Because they're trying to prevent future occurrences. So that's what the firmware update is. Ours goes is automatically on our watch or phone or whatever, but not here, right? Unless they have a GE subscription that they pay some fee, but most people don't, right? They're not hooking their dishwasher to Wi-Fi um, yet. All right, so any questions about firmware, alerts, or faults? Okay. Okay, so we're gonna move forward on this. So we get past that point, and then we have diagnostic features. All right, so diagnostic features, you got a lot of stuff here, okay? We have notifications, alerts, firmware updates. We already talked about that, not required. You got cycle history. Oh, now this is important. This is very important. Because the beauty of cycle history is you can see where stuff has failed 
previous cycles to the time you got there. The worst thing is you show up on site and somebody's like, oh, it happened, but you can't recreate it, right? Or you don't see it. Okay, yeah, that's better. <laughs> All right, you can't recreate it or you don't see it. So then you can kind of go across the grid and you can say, Oh, all right. So I see that uh, you ran a cycle. Oh, it didn't complete. It didn't complete. It didn't complete. Oh, before that, it completed. This was your wash temp. This is the wash zones, right? When we talk about turbidity sensor, yeah. that's measuring how dirty it is, yeah. right? You can see your turbidity numbers, max turbidity, how many times you open the door, <laughs> right? Um, wash range, what type of temperature range we're in because that's gonna give you some type of understanding on the heating element, yeah. right? 135 degrees, we get some pretty good temperatures in there. But if this thing's like 20 degrees, 50 degrees, 80 degrees, it's like, eh, something not working right. Um, yeah, so just some good data, just so you don't walk in blind. And you can also graph it out if you want to as well. And you can save this stuff to charts. All right, any questions on that? All right, so now we're gonna go with info and settings. So model number, appliance identity, software version, we really don't care about that. Configuration, you can see what they have the settings set on, what the user has it set on, on the front panel when they're running loads. So for instance, hey, it's not drying, and you look and you see the configuration, it's like, oh, heat's off. <laughs> of course it's not drying, the heat's off, all right? Um, cycle count, once again, this is just data as a technician, you can just kind of pinpoint to say, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, I, I hear what you're saying, I hear what I, I see what I observe, but let me try to understand. I think it just really, it makes you aware so you can like, actually get hands on with Absolutely. that part. Absolutely. And then as it's running, so you run a dishwasher, you have this hooked up, you can check load status, right? And on that load status, you can see what's on and what's off, which is, which is awesome, which is awesome. Because if it's on, you better be getting some voltage or something, or you know, if the heating element's on, you should open the door and the heating element's hot. So, just more data points. Um, okay, operate loads. So we can go through and whatever we wanna run, we can run. So we enter service mode. All right, then it's green when you're in service mode. Okay, still got the H2O error over there, which is fine. So let's say drain pump test, turn the drain pump on. You hear that drain pump kicking in, yep. right? Then you can, you know, just verify, see if it's draining. We know we got a bad drain pump, that's why it sound, <laughs> sound like an old uh, cutlass, okay. All right, okay, so then main cup dispenser, right? So it says we can open the main cup dispenser. Let's open that door and see if we can actually. Okay, that's our dispenser. Yep, All right. Okay, so, yep, main cup dispenser works. All right, so now we're gonna choose main cup dispenser. And I click it on my app. <laughs> All right, simple things, right? Okay, all right, let's go ahead and close it up. Okay, so then we have diagnostic test, so it does the field test. Obviously, we don't have water hooked up, so I'm good with that. But, you know, just to give you an understanding how that works. So we're gonna exit out of service mode. Okay, so now, it's probably a very important part as us technicians. We wanna stay up on the manuals and bulletins for everything we're working on. All right, so the beauty of this is from your app, you can go ahead and download the mini manual right there. Right, so you get your wiring diagram, everything, right? That's what we are talking about, that's what's on that sheet. Wow. Yeah. Good. All right, and then another thing you're gonna get, which is very important, is you're gonna get the recent bulletins by model number. So everything GE came out with recently, reference this model number, uh -huh. it's gonna be on there, okay? So you know there's a training bulletin that says dishwasher, water valve, and jumper harness. Check valve, not draining. Dishwasher not draining or stopping in the middle of the cycle. New drain pump, right? TB11-18, so let's just see what that says. All right, 
So that tells you right there. If I can go this way. All right, here we go. So it tells you what model, what digits, right? It tells you about resistance. It tells you how to check it on the terminal, what it should be. All right, 40 ohms of resistance, circulation and drain pump fuse. So it's give you some extra testing and extra things to look for when you're replacing the drain pump. That way you do it right. You know, you put the right clamps on and things like that. See, so check it out. Check out the harness. Gives an open reading. It gives the improper indication of a bad motor. So it just tells you how to do the correct, how to correct checks and things like that. So that's important. Yeah. That's important. And that's as professionals, we have the latest and greatest information. Yeah. All right, so click done there. And then you have all training bulletins, so you can even go to other appliances, but we don't care about that at this point in time. <laughs> um, and any questions on this? Sure. Yes. No. None? Okay. All right. Any questions about the dishwasher overall? Like, does it make sense or anything that... It does. I feel like we've touched every system on here. Um, so let's just talk through some common... I would say the top issues we run into with the GE dishwasher. Number one, dead condition. What does that mean? That means you're sitting there watching TV and you hear some chime from your dishwasher, just random chime. You're like, what is that? Go in the kitchen, there's no problem. A couple days later, a week later, you go to start your dishwasher and it's like no power, it's just dead, right? So. That's a software glitch in the dishwasher, okay? And there's firmware updates for certain models. And so what it is, is the software glitch is that it believes there's an overcurrent coming from the house to the dishwasher. So it automatically shuts everything down. Well, it does it, if it keeps doing it, or the person keeps setting the breaker and get it to work again, it's gonna burn the boards out. So there's actually a software fix. So if we can get them to not, you know, to, to stop resetting it, and we're able to get the power on, then we could just run the software fix from here and it fixes the issue. And it saves them a couple hundred bucks on changing all these boards out on the dishwasher. So that's a very common repair. Uh, the other one we talked about is the leaking at the drain pump at the elbow. Very common. Um, so that's the first thing I look for when I go out there. And then outside of that, I would say the third one is the drain pump. Just that drain pump going out. But like we saw there, we gotta make sure we diagnose it correctly uh, to make sure it's you know actually the drain pump versus something else like the control board. Um, well, that's that's all I have. Unless y'all have any additional questions.